Hello folks, I decided to upload a new video uh, in the training section, so this will be lecture number three. Funnily enough, continued with the theme of forcing the king out into the middle, and the reason why I am still sticking with this theme is because a couple of days ago I played a simul game where I miserably failed to actually deliver a very easy checkmate. Worse, it was part of my home preparation, so technically I could have won a game. Uh, without even needing to think about anything at all and just using my memory. Now I failed with it miserably, so I will show you how it went, not because of the epic fail, but because of uh, it is a truly beautiful line actually, where it occurred. I think I've already spoken quite a bit about this line, so I'm not going to go into the details of this opening line now. Instead I will just uh, rush through the opening moves and I will stop here for a second because I played here an interesting move that a lot of people would uh, misunderstand and in fact uh, people tend to misplay these positions because I played h4 here and what needs to be understood about this move is that White's main intention is that um, he doesn't want to attack on the king side. He just wants to create weaknesses so that to play f5 and uh, do all those funky attacking patterns that black does in the king's Indian would mean a lot more weaknesses for black. But eventually, after generating quite a few weaknesses, which means that it hinders black's attack, I would still want to swap over to the queen side, play uh, bishop e3, c5, knight back, knight c4, and so on, and win by uh, traditional means. Now, what happens in the game actually contradicts what I just said now, but it's because of uh, black's provocative and on one point inaccurate play. So you play knight f7, perfectly fine, h5, f5. All this is theory, knight g5, and in this position the main theoretical move is knight takes, and I have uh, a bit of an improvement, I believe, on the variations that is given by many opening moves uh, books, and uh, I was willing to play that, but he actually pushed f4 in. Now, this is a bad move, and the reason why this is a bad move is because after the simple knight takes knight, uh, rook takes knight, bishop g4, I get to swap off my bad bishop for the good Bishop. This is another common myth and the misunderstanding that in the King's Indian, uh, Black's good bishop is this. No, just because it gets to develop to the long diagonal and because of that's what makes this opening the King's Indian, this bishop is still the worst piece under the sun. It's blocked in behind this pawn, all the pawns are blocked on black, has no hope whatsoever to see the sunlight. On the other hand, this one has a very long scope and uh, potential to attack down that way, so a swapping of that bishop would be a big trump card. However, when analyzing this line, I realized that there was a very enterprising knight sacrifice here, which forces these moves, which, funnily enough, leads us to our favorite topic, King forced out to the middle. Now in this position the best move for white is perhaps bishop takes f4. I found this move with the help of my beautiful friend uh, Ripka. Um, and it turns out that this piece sacrifice only leads to a slightly worse position for white if black plays remarkably accurately. I can't even remember what the most accurate defending moves are here, but that is one thing is for sure, taking is a horrific mistake. And it's actually quite easy to blunder why this is so bad, because many people would assume that the whole concept with this sacrifice is to give a queen check and then hit the king from there, but it's totally useless after knight e5, we can uh, put the pieces back into the box because the game is over. White is two pieces down and there is no attack whatsoever. In fact, the whole idea with this pawn sack is to sack even more stuff. And uh, now you can see the point. We want to bring the knight into the attack and uh, make sure that uh, we have got another piece to chase this king even further out. Um, my opponent, he played um, e5. He took with uh, knight. I gave him a check, king up, and here comes the next move, which uh, makes this whole line absolutely amazing. And this is a really, really tough move to find. It's bishop g6 check. It is truly fantastic because white keeps on sacking pieces on empty squares. Remember, well, bishop takes was an, uh, a capture, but then e5 was an empty square, and now bishop g6 is another empty square. These sacrifices are very difficult to find because they seem just to throw pieces away for no reason. But the whole point is that uh, the king can't take because then this is made and so one of the knights would have to take which means that check 
can force the king even further out. And now we have got a forced mate here. A beautiful one, by the way. It's still not easy to find. I bet that many reasonably good players would fail, given five minutes to find a forced mate here for white. Uh, but it, it is actually remarkably beautiful. Uh, the point is that you shouldn't start giving checks on these two squares because after king takes queen here, king here, I seem to be able to run away without uh, major damage. So the point is that this check is uh, the surprising winner and after king d4, rook d1 check, king c5, queen b5 check finishes the game off in a beautiful style. And this is how I could have won a game, but what did I do instead? I played like a complete retard and I forgot that uh, in this position after knight takes I was supposed to give knight check and I just instantly gave queen check, king here and then I realized that everything was botched. I can't even remember what I did here. I think I came back. No, no, I didn't. I may have given some checks or maybe I just castled. I can't remember one way or another. I went on to lose the game miserably, which was really sad because it's not very often that uh, someone falls into your opening preparation all the way to the mate which uh, could have been the case easily here had I not been a complete uh, goose. But, you know, what can you do? There was pressure on, same all. Uh, any other lame excuse I can think of? No. Nah. So, that's all. Uh, so, once again, Rook takes F3 and uh, this beautiful mate should have been the finish of the game, but sadly that's not how it ended. Nonetheless, I will leave this up as a final picture on this video because it is a truly amazing attack and one that uh, brought quite a lot of joy to me despite of the fact that I actually didn't execute it correctly. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will be back with more soon. Thanks for watching.